Have you ever, like, looked at technical specs and seen terms like excitation systems or AVRs? You know they're important for power reliability, but the jargon, it can feel a bit much, right? <laughs> well, today we're going to try and cut through all that. We're doing a deep dive into low voltage alternators, focusing specifically on these uh, essential excitation and regulation systems. Oh. Or mission to unpack the core ideas really look at the main systems shunt pmg and arp all this info comes straight from a document by emerson's leroy somer a major player in this field the goal is for you to walk away with a clear kind of concise understanding to really make sense of these things so let's jump in yeah and that clarity is so important because these systems i mean they're often hidden away aren't they but they're absolutely the backbone of efficient reliable power think about a hospital's backup power or maybe a data center even a construction site understanding the difference between shunt pmg and airy well, it's not just about being technically savvy it's actually crucial for making sure the right power solution is chosen for the job okay so let's get right to the heart of it then the alternator All right when we say excitation what are we actually talking about why is it so so vital for keeping the voltage steady and the automatic voltage regulator the avr is that like the brain controlling this whole process you basically nailed it the avr is the brain the command center excitation is fundamentally about creating the magnetic field inside the alternator's rotor that magnetic field is what induces the voltage in the stator windings that's the power we actually use so the avr's job is to uh precisely generate and regulate the current feeding that magnetic field. It's constantly watching the alternator's output voltage and making adjustments. Lewis Summers AVRs, for instance, they're designed to be pretty simple to interface with, but they react incredibly fast. We're like under half a second, 500 millisecond to regulate voltage within like plus or minus half a percent in steady state. Half a percent? Wow. Yeah. And they're built tough too. Vibration resistant coded circuits, they meet serious standards like IEC 6034-34- and UL508. That super fast response time sounds like a real game changer for stability, especially when, you know, the power demand jumps around. Now, you mentioned the three main systems, shunt, PMG, and ARP. What's the fundamental difference between them? Why is picking the right one so critical for different applications? Well, the core difference lies in two key things. First, how the AVR actually gets its own power supply. And second, how it senses the main alternator's output voltage. These two factors, power source and voltage sensing, they really dictate how the alternator performs under different kinds of electrical loads. It's sort of like choosing the right engine configuration for a specific vehicle. You know, a truck needs something different than a race car. Okay, let's start with shunt then. The document calls it the simplest, good for basic applications. How does it work and what are its um, strengths and maybe more importantly, its weaknesses? Right, shunt. It's the most straightforward. The AVR gets its power and its voltage reference signal directly from the main alternator output terminals. It's just shunted off the main output. The big advantage is simplicity. It's cost effective. But, and this is a big but, that simplicity comes with real limitations. It just cannot handle high overloads very well. And critically, it has basically no short circuit capability. No short circuit capability. What does that mean in practice? It means if there's a bad short circuit somewhere in the system, the alternator's output voltage collapses completely, which then prevents downstream circuit breakers or fuses from tripping properly to isolate the fault. Not ideal. Uh, I see. So when we talk basic applications, we're thinking maybe situations where you don't expect huge power surges, like maybe a small backup generator for a house, not a hospital. Exactly. Shut is fine where loads are pretty steady, predictable where you don't need the system to power through large motor starts or sustain voltage during a major electrical fault. Basic backup, essential but non-critical stuff. Makes sense. Simple, cost-effective, but limited. Okay, so if shunt can't handle the big hits, what about when you need that capability for something critical, or even a flicker is bad news? That brings us to PMG Permanent Magnet Generator, described as suitable for demanding applications. What's the big leap here? What makes it so much better for those high-stick scenarios? Right. This is where the engineering really sort of steps up. With PMG, the crucial difference is the AVR gets its power from a completely separate generator. It's a small permanent magnet generator mounted right on the shaft behind the main alternator. And the key point is this PMG delivers a constant voltage to the AVR that's totally independent of what's happening in the main alternator winding. Independent power supply. Exactly. Right. And that independence is huge. It means the PMG system can handle high overloads, think starting large motors. And even more importantly, it provides a sustained short circuit current. 
typically 300% of the rated current for 10 seconds. Three times the normal current for 10 seconds. Why is that so important? That capability is essential for what's called discriminating protection. Hmm. Imagine that short circuit in a hospital wing. With PMG, the alternator keeps supplying enough current for those 10 seconds to allow the circuit breaker on the faulty circuit to trip and isolate the problem. Without it, like with shunt, the whole voltage collapses, potentially taking down power everywhere. PMG allows the system to be selective, keeping critical power flowing elsewhere. Got it. So it isolates the problem without a total blackout. Precisely. And because it uses permanent magnets, voltage buildup is inherent. It's just very reliable from the start. That independent power supply really does sound like the key. But I noticed the document mentions a trade-off. PMG systems tend to make the alternator longer, physically bigger, and they're usually the most expensive option, marked with three euro signs. Are there other factors? You're right, those are the main trade-offs. Those? Size and cost. They are definite considerations. But for those really demanding applications, marine, heavy industry, big construction, hospitals, banks, that reliability, that ability to handle massive loads and ride through faults is often non-negotiable. The higher cost and the larger footprint are frequently justified by the sheer performance and resilience you get. It guarantees that continuous, stable power when you absolutely need it. Okay, so PMG is the heavyweight champion for demanding jobs, but with some size and cost implications. Now let's look at AREP, also listed for demanding applications, but it's noted as patented by Leroy Sommer. How does AREP deliver that high performance, and what's different about its approach compared to PMG? AREP is uh, quite a clever integrated solution. Instead of adding a separate PMG unit, the AVR gets its power from two special independent auxiliary windings built right into the main stator. Okay, windings inside the main stator? <laughs> yes. One winding gives a voltage that's proportional to the alternator's output voltage. That's called the shunt characteristic. The second winding provides a voltage that's proportional to the current being drawn. This acts like a compound characteristic or a booster effect. These two are combined to power the AVR. But here's the really smart part. This power supply for the AVR's power circuit is independent of the voltage sensing circuit, which still measures the main output voltage. Hmm. Independent power supply again, but achieved differently. What's the benefit of that? The benefit is that the excitation current the AVR delivers isn't affected by distortions or, like, noise on the main voltage output. Think about nonlinear loads, things like computers, modern lighting, variable speed drives. They draw current in jagged pulses, which can distort the nice sine wave of the output voltage. Ah, so the AVR gets clean power to do its job, even if the main output is a bit messy because of the connected equipment. Exactly. It isolates the AVR's power source from those output voltage harmonics and distortions. Mm. And because of this design, ARDP can deliver performance very similar to PMG. High overload capacity, and again, that critical 300% short circuit capability for 10 seconds for discriminated protection. Okay, some more capability to PMG. Yes, but here's a surprising point from the document. Alternators using AREP excitation are actually shorter in length than those using PMG. Shorter? Even with similar performance, that's a significant plus for installation space. It is. It uses a special skater design, as the document notes, but achieves comparable results in a smaller package. And the price point? marked as two euro signs. So it's positioned as a powerful mid-range option. Correct. Right. It offers a strong balance of performance, size, and cost, making it suitable for many of the same demanding applications as PMG telecom, marine, industry, hospitals. Okay, we've got the core systems. Shunt for basic, PMG, and AREP for demanding, each with their own design philosophy. Now let's dig into the AVRs themselves, the brains we talked about. What about their advanced features, especially for managing those sudden load changes? Right, the AVRs themselves have evolved. Leroy Summer offers different ranges. You've got the simpler analog ones, like the R200 range, mostly for shunt systems. They provide basic functions like underspeed protection, the U function. Then there's the R400 range, also analog, but more capable. Works with shunt, PMG, and AREP. These offer more performance, Things like single-phase sensing, setting limits on excitation, excitation ceiling, the U function, and also LAM, which we'll get to. They also have features for running generators in parallel, sometimes needing extra bits like current transformers or special modules for mains connection. Some models even offer three-phase sensing or overload protection. And the digital ones. Yeah. The D500 range. Yes, the D500 range is digital. High performance, plus communication capabilities. They feature things like EaserRig, rig 
For easier parameter setting, they can do single or three phase sensing, adjustable youth and LAM, even stator over voltage protection. Parallel operation is often built in, and you get communication options like USB, CAN bus, J1939, allows for much better system integration and monitoring. That communication aspect seems really key for modern systems. Okay, you mentioned UF and LAM functions, load impact, load shedding functions. How do they specifically help stabilize things during sudden power demands? These are crucial for smooth operation under stress. The UF function, or volts per hertz, watches the engine speed. If a big load hits and the engine speed drops below a set threshold, the AVR instantly reduces the output voltage in proportion to the frequency drop. Why reduce the voltage? It helps prevent the engine from stalling under the sudden load. Then as the engine recovers speed, the voltage is gradually brought back up to the rated level. It's like an electronic governor for the electrical side. Okay, prevent stalling. What about LAM, load acceptance module? LAM is even more sophisticated. Think of it like a shock absorber for the whole generator set when a big load hits. When that sudden load connects, the engine speed dips and the voltage naturally sags. LAM actively works to reduce the amount of voltage drop and also shorten the time it takes for the engine speed to recover. So it makes the whole system react better, more smoothly. Exactly. It effectively increases the load step the generator can handle for the same amount of speed variation. The document notes it even has adaptive tuning for really large impacts, over 60%. That sounds incredibly useful. So these features, you and LAM, are really about smoothing out those sudden bumps in power demand, keeping things stable. Essential for critical applications, right? Absolutely. Hospitals, data centers, anywhere a voltage dip or instability can cause major problems. These AVR features are vital. Okay. We've covered a lot of ground systems. The AVR smarts, let's try to pull it all together now. For someone listening, trying to make sense of this, let's do a direct comparison. Shunt versus ARAP versus PMG. What are the key takeaways, the decision points? Right, let's line them up based on the document's comparison table. It really comes down to matching the system to your needs and budget. Motor starting capacity. Basic for shunt. High for both ARAP and PMG. Okay. Short circuit capability. Yeah. It's a big one. None for shunt. But 300% for 10 seconds for both ARAP and PMG. Crucial difference. Right, the protection aspect. Susceptibility to non-linear loads. Maximum for shunt, meaning it struggles with noisy, modern loads. Minimum for both ARAP and PMG, they handle them much better. Important with today's electronics. Number of components. Yeah. Minimum for shunt and ARAP. Maximum for PMG because of that extra generator unit. Fewer parts, potentially simpler. Potentially. And possibility of conversion. The document says, yes, you can convert between them, like upgrading a shunt to PMG or even downgrading a PMG if needed. Some flexibility there. Good to know. What about physical size? Alternator length. Minimum for shunt and ARP. Maximum for PMG. We mentioned that earlier. And cost. Price. Single euro sign for shunt. Mm -hmm. Double euro for ARP. Triple euro for PMG. Clear hierarchy there. Oh. Stator design. Standard for shunt and PMG. That special integrated design for RAP voltage buildup. Shunt and RAP rely on residual magnetism. PMG uses its permanent magnets, which is generally seen as more inherently reliable for starting up. Okay. And typical applications. Applications. Basic backup for shunt. Telecom is highlighted for RAP. Then marine, industry, construction, hospitals, banks, standard production, those are listed for both ARREP and PMG. They cover similar demanding ground. Right. And one last interesting point. Lifetime. Yes, lifetime. The document rates it as optimal for shunt and ARAP, but reduced for PMG. Reduced? Why? Primarily because PMG includes that extra rotating part, the permanent magnet generator itself. More moving parts generally mean more potential wear points over the long term compared to the integrated ARRP system or the simple shunt. That's a really important point for long-term thinking. Okay, that comparison is super helpful. And it's worth mentioning, as you look at Leroy Summers' alternator ranges, the LSA 40, 42.3, 44.3, all the way up to 54, the document shows they're generally compatible with all three. Shunt, AREP, and PMG gives you options across their product line. Some also offer a PMI option, another variation. So wrapping this up, we've really dissected these three main excitation systems. Shunt for the basics, PMG and AREP stepping up for the demanding critical jobs, but but with different designs and trade-offs. And we've seen how vital the right AVR with those smart features like OOF and LAM is for keeping the power stable and reliable, regardless of the load. Hopefully that gives you a much clearer picture. Absolutely. And maybe a final thought to leave you with, building on that lifetime point. Given that AREP offers comparable performance to PMG in many demanding areas, is shorter, potentially simpler with fewer parts, and rated for optimal lifetime, how much weight should you give to that potential 
reduced lifetime and maybe higher long-term maintenance cost of the PMG due to its extra turning part when making a selection. Even if the initial performance specs look very similar on paper, it really pushes you to think about the total cost of ownership and long-term operational uptime, not just the upfront capability.